Hi, I'm Sergeant Speaking with Earthwalker Primitive. What I got here today is a spool of deer sinew cordage that uh, I have made from some salvaged deer sinew. And in the beginning of this video, I showed a few pictures of uh, a deer carcass that I found that was almost completely uh, uh, rotted away, minus the uh, rear tendon of the, uh, the deer's leg. And uh, the great thing about that sinew is even the bugs know that it's a very strong, durable, lasting uh, tendon, so they leave it alone. And it was obviously still there, so um, just that resource alone is a great usable resource and something that we would probably look at and discard and walk past and think that there's nothing useful out of it. So uh, um, I got a good length, lengthy spool of this cordage, and today we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about uh, making sinew cordage, and we're going to go over a little video on how to do that. So uh, I'll go ahead and set ourselves up and uh, be right back with you. Okay, so like I said, what I got here is a piece of dried sinew um, that I've had for a while. I've had this for months from that deer, and it's all dried. It's really hard. And uh, basically, now what I would do usually is I would take my um, hammer stone that I have at home, which I'm a knucklehead today, and I completely forgot my hammer stone, but uh, that's okay. Stones are free and they're everywhere. He would simply just start pounding this down. Through its lengths. I would usually do this when I have a flat rock that I use for my primitive tool making. But like I said, I don't have that today. And uh, you will start seeing it start to separate. And you're going to keep on pounding this down all the way until all these separate into a, into a line. Now, one way you can speed this up is also by soaking this. And it'll help, it'll more mash it, and then you can start peeling apart. And that's exactly how we're going to go about doing it today. Let that soak, and uh, after it's good and good and uh, good and soft, we'll go ahead and start pounding it down. And as you saw me doing earlier, I put it back into the water. And you could do that as it feels dry, it's drying up, or if it's not soft enough, you can put it back in there and let it soak for a while. Now, some people will do this while it's dry and completely pound it out. But you can do that, or you can do like I did and soak it first and then pound it out. Uh, it's neither here nor there. It's they're both methods of doing it. I chose to do it this way, and it also determines on how thick or strong you want this cord. I actually want mine to be a little thicker than usual, so pounding out when it's dry tends to make it uh, split and fray a little bit thinner than it does when it's wet. So we're going to do it this way so we can have a little bit of a thicker, stronger cordage. And basically, you're just pounding it down, and now what I'll do is I'll start working it apart. until the individual fiber starts separating. And ideally what you want to do is you want to get it into as straight and as long strands as you possibly can. I can see how it's starting to separate into fibers. So what I'll do is I'll just start and work that one fiber all the way down as long as I can possibly get it. And once again, depending on how thick and strong or thin and delicate you want it is how much further you break down each of those fibers. Once again the idea is to try to keep it as long as you can. If you feel like it's going to split and break then don't bother breaking that part apart. Then you'll just be left with a short strand. So 
I'm going to keep working this and also get more water and I'll be right back. And like I said, I was a little unprepared today. Uh, this brown, dirty darkness you see on this cord, that's just from the, the wood of this table and the dirt that was on that rock. Like I said, usually I use my hammer stones that I have in my primitive skills kit, but uh, I kind of was ill prepared today, left the house. It's kind of impromptu coming out here. You know, as always, leave the house with forgetting something. Wouldn't be me if I've remembered everything. But all I'm doing is, like I said, separating this down. Um, you, you know what you're going to make as far as what you want the thickness of it to be, so you just keep that in mind as you're pulling it. I mean, you just simply break it down to whatever thin you want it. Like I said, some people do um, do this when it's dry. You can do it when it's wet. And I like, what I like about when it's wet is it doesn't get as fibrous and flaky, and sometimes when you're pulling it apart, it can seem to uh, break smaller than you want it or tear and rip a little easier when it's wet. It kind of sticks together a little bit more not as fibrous so for me it's just my preferred method I'm not saying you have to do it this way it's just a way of doing it I'm just pulling out my individual strands and laying them out now the piece you're working with like I said feels like it's getting too tight too stuck together stuff does act like a glue I mean, you just simply just take your piece Throw it back in the water for a while. Let it soften back up. You get to a spot where you feel it hasn't been pounded. Oops, that was a little too small. Pound it too much, then or not pounded enough. You just take it and pound it out again. What I find works out easy is to take the long strand and kind of work in the middle, and then pull it out. I'm try rather than trying to work from one end down, you tend to do what I did earlier and peel out a little tiny small piece that's too small. But you start in the middle and work your way out. For me anyways, it seems to work out a little better. Like I said, this, this these ligaments, these they use to make the sinew. This stuff lasts forever. Like I said, this deer that I harvested this off of well over a year ago. I cut the, the uh, tendon off, made sure I had all the any meat or any fat cleaned off of it. And I dried it in the back of my truck just by putting it in a box, let it sit there until it dried hard. It just didn't take long at all. And I had it sitting in my house with all my uh, primitive gear stuff in a box and it, it lasts just as long as you're going to need it. It doesn't rot. It doesn't go away. What I like to do is take the piece and just twist it. It kind of helps straighten it up a little bit. It's almost like pre-twisting it for the braid. I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find my longest piece. It's actually a pretty short piece of tendon I was using. It was a piece left over from previous projects. Now what we're going to do is a single twist braid. We'll start off with that piece. Just simply twist it in the middle, to tighten it down until it twists over on itself, just like making any other cordage. It's one simple method of making cordage applies to almost every kind of medium. There we go. Now you got your your end point, your start. You simply twist. And you have your cord to start it. Bring it up on the camera and show you. 
You start it, like I said, by twisting it until it twists it up on itself. And then you're simply twisting the top piece, grabbing the bottom piece, bringing it under. Twist. And over on itself. Twist the top, bring the bottom under. Helps sometimes too if with this trail piece, if you give it a little twist, it helps tighten it. Continuing on the splice, take your next piece, lay it behind, and then just twist those two together. Then you continue on. Splice this next piece in. Like I said, I'll lay it behind. And these tails you're going to leave out. That's helping lock it in. You can trim them down. But you want to make sure you have that tail so that way the splice gets completely into the braid. As you can see, laying it behind. And then they're twisting the two together, almost like you're twisting a twist tie on a, on a, on a bread bag. And then you continue working that in. Alright, so I'm working my way down, just continuously splicing and braiding this cordage, and I'm just about done. I got the length that I need. I did have a lot left over. Got a couple pieces still in my. Now, when it gets down to the end, like I have right here, I kind of lock it in so it doesn't fray and come undone. It's simply just almost as if you're starting a piece of cord. I'll just sit here and twist and twist and twist. Just to get it to twist over on top of itself. Just like if you were when you started it, how you twist to get the middle started. And what that does is it rolls it back on itself a few times. And when it dries, that'll dry and shrink like this cord it shrunk and it will uh, lock itself in place and once I let it dry it will turn out just like this and for storing it you do something something simple like this I just took a piece of bone and wrapped it around and made a little spool and uh, as you can see when it dries it's going to stay formed pretty much to the shape that it was dried in but now if you were working with this using this for sewing or making something all you, could, all you had to do is take this and just drop it in some water for a few for a little bit, uh, not long at all, and it will be completely pliable and be able to uh, uh, form it and use it to make whatever craft you're making, and um, it would then dry in that position. So, well, I'm Sergeant Speakman, Earthwalk Primitive, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.